The stadium in Tampa, Florida, where the National Football League will stage its silver anniversary Super Bowl game. The 25th Super Bowl matches the NFC champion New York Giants against the favored AFC champion Buffalo Bills. Our weather has been improving all day, and now we have but a 20% chance of rain. But as we await Super Bowl 25, the concerns of all Americans are not just on the football game. No, our hearts remain with our fighting men and women in the Persian Gulf, some of whom are going to be able to watch today's Super Bowl game at 2 o'clock in the morning, their time. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to ABC's coverage of Super Bowl 25. I'm Brent Musburger. Now, normally a Super Bowl buildup is awash with celebrations, parties, and hype, but not this one. The biggest sporting event on the American calendar takes a backseat to the crisis unfolding in the Gulf. It may not be business as usual, but the business at hand for the Giants and the Bills will be trying to win this Vince Lombardi trophy. And extreme precautions have been taken here today to see that this contest is not disrupted and that the folks gathered at Tampa Stadium are safe. Early this morning, hundreds of law enforcement officials poured into Tampa Stadium. They checked underneath the hoods of cars and inside the trunks. Mounted police have been called in for crowd control. And the journalists covering Super Bowl 25 had to send their telephones and their typewriters through an x-ray machine. Meanwhile, outside, FBI agents inside a U.S. Customs helicopter studied the stadium. And inside the locker room with the Giants and the Bills, the players will show their support of the soldiers with the American flag on the back of the helmets that they will wear today in the Super Bowl. Now, because airspace has been restricted, you will not see those pictures from the SeaWorld and Goodyear blimps that we were planning on bringing you as part of ABC's coverage here today. But throughout our coverage all day long at the Super Bowl, ABC News with Peter Jennings is ready to bring you scheduled reports and bulletins on the conflict if the events warrant. Standing by now to call Super Bowl 25, our ABC's primetime trio. So let's go upstairs to Frank Gifford, Al Michaels, and Dan Deardorff. Frank? Thank you very much, Brand. And of course, it began for us a long time ago. It seems that long, back in August, uh, but we're delighted to be back. And I'm sure I speak for all of us. In fact, Frank, it began for us on uh, Monday night, August 13th, our first preseason telecast. And it featured the New York Giants at the Buffalo Bills. And the Giants, for whatever it's worth, won that game 20 to 6. And here we are now in Tampa, ready to call a game that over the years we've seen some real mismatches, some games that weren't as good as we hoped. I like the matchup of these two teams. Maybe this will be the one. Maybe we'll have the good one. Strange year in some ways. Uh, everyone thought the 49ers would three-peat. They came within a few seconds of that. Of course, we had both the Buffalo Bills and the Giants twice on our schedule. But let's go back and take a look at the year 1990 in review. Die out on this field if that's what it takes. Let it all go. Back in September, 28 NFL teams embarked on a quest for the Lombardi Trophy, football's most coveted prize. But the 1990 season was one of surprises, and no surprise was bigger than Jimmy Johnson and the Dallas Cowboys, who came within a single victory of making the playoffs after winning only one game in 1989. The new look Cowboys raised a lot of eyebrows, while the resurgent Raiders returned to a punishing style of play to the right is Harbaugh out of the shotgun, pursued by Townsend, pursued by Wallace, and Wallace gets in, the ball goes into the end zone, and the Raiders have a touchdown! The Dolphins leap back into the league's elite, thanks in part to Sammy Smith and a return of a rushing attack. And now, we watch the Chicago Bears rebound from a 6-10 season to emerge as the unlikely champions of the NFC Central. Woo! But Frank, not all teams had something to cheer about. Picked to contend for the Super Bowl, the Vikings never got a grip on the season. But they were hardly alone in falling flat on their face. The Rams lost 11 games for the first time since JFK occupied the White House. While the Broncos spent most of the season looking as if they were replaying last year's Super Bowl. The big debacle, though, occurred in Cleveland, where the Browns lost a head coach and a club record 13 games. Some of the season's most memorable moments were provided by the quarterbacks. Case in point, Randall Cunningham, who reminded us that Eagles truly can fly. Leaps into the end zone!
Houston, the focus was on Warren Moon, the master of the run and shoot, established the Oilers as a threat to score every time they had the ball. Then there was Steve DeBerg. End off to a Koye, pitches back to DeBerg. The flea flicker, hit a long pass down the middle, touchdown! Six-year-old journeyman led the Chiefs to the playoffs against Miami. One play at a time's our way, guys. Stay with it no matter what happens. The end will be there. We'll be on top of you. Take it one play at a time. Let's go. Well, Al, one play is all Dan Marino has ever needed. Proving that he and wide receiver Mark Clayton are still the money men in Miami. Unprecedented fifth Super Bowl trophy was the 49ers' modest goal this season, and behind Joe Montana, they almost had it. Back to throw Montana. The short pass right flat. It'll be a touchdown for the 49ers. Mike. But the story in this year's playoffs has been Jim Kelly and the Buffalo Bills, who in the comfortable confines of Rich Stadium have scored at will against their two playoff opponents. But that may change in Tampa because the Bills will face the team that allowed the fewest points in the NFL and which has surrendered only 16 points in two playoff contests. The New York Giants, like their coach Bill Parcells, not very flashy, they just win. And guys, I don't think it's all that big a surprise the Giants and the Bills are here, but I think it is a surprise that they're here, both teams finishing the regular season without their starting quarterbacks, and that's tough to do. You know, another thing we should mention in the year-end review, the playoff format expanded this year, Frank, from 10 teams to 12. What it meant is a 500 team got into the playoffs. The Saints, the Cowboys almost made it at 7-9, and nine, and that's the type of thing I think we're going to find that will become commonplace in years to come. Any trends you spotted this year, Dan, you think will continue into the future? Well, you know, Al, everybody talked about the run and shoot, and I don't think there's any doubt that it is here to stay. You look at the success that Houston and Warren Moon had in it uh, up in Detroit with Barry Sanders, how effectively he runs from that formation. I think back to the 80s, and situational substitution was a phrase that everybody was using. I think they're going to have to look at that and see how much it goes into the 90s because the offense of the Bengals, what we're going to see today were the Bills. They're calling the shots on who's on the field defensively. All right, more of our pregame show coming up from Tampa. The temperature's fine. The stadium is rapidly filling. There'll be 74,000 plus, and we'll be back with more of our pregame. ABC Sports coverage of Super Bowl 25. Brought to you by Thrifty Car Rental. Because it's your money. By Sharp Electronics Corporation. From sharp minds come sharp products. And by Head & Shoulders. Because you never get a second chance to make a first impression. Help relieve her heartburn, her antacid uses aluminum and magnesium, but his is Tums, and Tums has calcium. Two warring football leagues, the NFL and AFL, competed on the field for the first time. Los Angeles celebrities were part of a crowd which watched Hank Stram and the Kansas City Chiefs against Vince Lombardi and the Green Bay Packers. Max McGee of the Packers, who did not expect to play, wound up an unlikely hero, catching seven passes, two of them for touchdowns. The key play occurred early in the second half. Lenny Dawson was driving the Chiefs for a go-ahead touchdown when Willie Wood intercepted this pass and returned it 50 yards. Today, the Super Bowl trophy is named for this man. Sprinkled throughout our pregame show, we're going to relive some of the moments from the previous 24 Super Bowls. Some you'll remember instantly, others are a little bit more obscure. Now, we said at the top of the broadcast that we would bring you regularly scheduled ABC News reports. Right now, we join Peter Jennings in New York. Hey, Brent, thanks very much. Obviously, while the country is distracted today, the major news in the Gulf today is this Allied air attack made by U.S. fighter bombers on an oil installation just off the coast of Iraq. It's really just uh, off the coast of Kuwait, actually, south of Kuwait cities. 
Uh, General Schwarzkopf, the Allied commander, came along a little earlier today and said that using smart bombs, um, U.S. fighter bombers had moved in and mounted an attack on that very location where the Iraqis had opened the taps and were... ...by soccer field in Tampa. And the true test on that new shot is going to come when the game begins in a couple hours. Now, still ahead of us here this afternoon, we'll profile the quarterback of the Giants. And we'll meet the owner of the Buffalo Bills. A look at instant replay. The two coaches will talk about their chances here today and an interview with NFL Commissioner Paul Tagliabue. Repeatedly failed to cross the goal line against the Jets' underrated defense. They were intercepted four times. Namath, who brashly guaranteed a victory three days before, surgically dissected the stunned Colts. The heroes were many. Tackle Winston Hill, halfback Emerson Boozer, fullback Matt Snell. But the number one hero was Joe Namath. Slow continues. Here again, Brent Musburger. Well, both the Giants and the Bills arrived in Tampa early in the week. And unlike previous Super Bowls, there was only one week to get ready. Rather than two, the NFL will go back to the two-week schedule next year. The Giants have seemed much looser here in Tampa than they were when they played in one Super Bowl 21 out in Pasadena. But, Jack Arute, I guess some things never change with the Giants, do they? Well, that's right, Brent. In fact, it was a very uneventful week of preparation for Coach Bill Parcells and the New York Giants. He prefers the one week versus the two. He says that way his coaches can't overprepare. But the one thing that remained the same was his penchant for getting to the stadium early. He left five hours before kickoff time to come out here and sit in the locker room by himself. Well, he's a little bit superstitious, so it wasn't exactly by himself. You see, in Super Bowl 21, when they were victorious in the Rose Bowl, he made then backup quarterback Jeff Rutledge ride out with him that early. So today, he gave the early call to his backup quarterback of today, Matt Cavanaugh. Brent? All right, Jack. Uh, Dick Vermeil, when you went to play the Raiders with the Philadelphia Eagles, did you go too early that day? Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, way too early. What were your memories uh, of that game, Jack? Brent, when you lose a Super Bowl, you have very few fond memories of the game. You know, you have... You know, it didn't go well, but your fond memories are, are come from having helped an organization, a city, the fans, your family and friends experience a very unique event. Tell me about the uh, Giants. You used to compete against them regularly. What well, about their chances here today? Regularly. I think the number one thing they have to do is to not allow the offensive cadence and mechanics and the tempo that Buffalo applies to disrupt their defensive discipline. They've got to maintain defensive discipline. I think the second thing they have to do is take the ball away. Take it away and then convert it to points like they did against the 49ers last week. They did a great job. With the new speed up the game rules, offensive teams have lost seven snaps a game, magnifying the value of the takeaway. You lose the ball twice today, you're going to lose the football game. Dick, we are blessed with a lot of Super Bowl experience. Mm -hmm. You know, we have Lynn Swan. He played in four Super Bowls, won them all with the Steelers. And uh, Lynn, the Bills are here for the first time. A chance they'll be a little nervous today? Oh, there certainly is. This is a big ball game. That's why I was very interested in what Jack Ruth had said about Bill Parcells and the superstitions. Marvin Levy is also superstitious. He has one. He says if you don't block and you don't tackle, you don't win. Like the Giants, a week has been very good for the Bills. No injuries, no controversies. So Marv's number one concern has been the attitude and focus of his team. He wants him to concentrate, not think too much about the 51 points he scored against the Raiders, not to think about the fact they beat the Giants. What he wants in his ball game today is that blue-collar Buffalo Bills football team playing their best game in the Super Bowl, Brent. All right, and uh, Bob Greasy has almost as much Super Bowl experience as Lynn, three of them with the Dolphins. What's your favorite memory, Bob? Got some fond memories, but uh, an embarrassing one that sticks out. We were on the four-yard line. Uh, I had forgotten that the snap count was on one. I turned to ask Zonka for help. Zonka says, it's on two. Uh, obviously, when the ball came up on one, he said it a little bit loud, too. When the ball came up on one, uh, nobody moved, nobody hardly moved. In fact, the Vikings, they didn't move either. They thought it was on two also. <laughs> How about the Bills here this afternoon and their chances? Bob? Well, the, the strength of the Buffalo Bills is their offense. Uh, they're the highest scoring offense in the National Football League. They're led by two people. Uh, they're running back, uh, Thurman Thomas, who would get my vote for MVP, and Jim Kelly, who led the uh, passing rating for the quarterbacks in the National Football League. Look for Kelly to go long uh, and make some big plays here today. If they have a problem defensively, it's against the run. Uh, a lot of people have run to their left side at uh, Leon Seals and Cornelius Bennett. 
The, the Giants match up well against the Bills in that they like to run the football. It's a strength of their game. Look for the Giants to go two and three tight ends today and try and control the ball at Cornelius Bennett and Leon Seals. All right, Bob and Dick, we look forward to hearing from you throughout the afternoon. You know, spanning the globe, we see the increasing number of countries watching today's Super Bowl game. Some at odd times, for example, It'll be 2 a.m. over in Saudi Arabia. The remotest of the 60 nations, the Marshall Islands, 2,100 nautical miles southwest of Hawaii, 2,900 Americans on a military base have the opportunity to watch today's game live tomorrow. You cross the international dateline to get there. But as you take a look at this beautiful island, you get the feeling that some folks might prefer to be outside. Power. Control. It's what makes us excel beyond others. Back in 1891, this was the Tampa Bay Hotel, billed as the world's most elegant. Once headquarters for Teddy Roosevelt and his famous Rough Riders. Jack, they don't make nicknames like they used to. Well, no, they might not, Brent, but when you look down the Giants roster, you find a couple. John Elliott at 305 pounds, well, they call him Jumbo. When you take a look at Matt Barr making five field goals against the 49ers to get here to the Super Bowl, now his teammates call him Cash. But there are no group nicknames, but that's not been the case in other Super Bowls and throughout the course of history in the National Football League. From Stettin in the Baltic, to Trieste in the Adriatic, an iron curtain has descended across the continent. In Pittsburgh, it was a steel curtain that slammed shut against all challengers in the 1970s. We don't give up points, and to give up a touchdown is like something very, very bad has happened. This defensive wall included Dwight White, Ernie Holmes, L.C. Greenwood, and Mean Joe Green, and won four Super Bowl rings. Over time, I think the steel curtain became bigger than each one of us. Chicago's Monsters of the Midway was one of the first NFL nicknames, coined in the 1940s and long before the first Super Bowl. In the 50s, San Francisco had the million-dollar backfield. All four went on to the Hall of Fame, the only backfield in history to do so. It was the greatest backfield, one backfield, of all time. Uh, why they called it million-dollar backfield, I really don't know, because it should have been called maybe the uh, hundred-dollar backfield, because that's what they paid us those days. <laughs> Defenses started earning nicknames in the 60s. The L.A. Rams had the fearsome foursome. It was a one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people leader. A hit two in the late 60s was also the nickname of the Minnesota Vikings defensive unit, earning a reputation for chewing up opposing offenses. Around the same time, the Doomsday defense descended in Dallas. In 1973, the Dolphins' no-name defense, with no individual stars, helped win Super Bowl VII. The Orange Crush led the Broncos to Super Bowl XII. It's a nickname that Denver's defense has passed on year to year. In the 80s, the Dolphins had five players whose last names started in B. That and a popular TV skit in the 80s gave rise to the Miami Dolphins swarm of killer bees. Remember these Marx Brothers? Well, Miami has their own Marx Brothers. Wide receivers Mark Duper and Mark Clayton. A hit movie in 1987, and quarterback John Elway gave Broncos receivers Vance Johnson, Mark Jackson, and Ricky Nateel the nickname The Three Amigos. In the 80s, the Redskin receiving corps, known for their group high fives after TD receptions, went by the name The Fun Bunch. I love them hogs. I love them hogs. The offensive line of the same Redskin team was called the Hogs for their groveling and grunting on the line of scrimmage. The Hogs rooted their way to three Super Bowls. The most important thing about it was the whole team respect them because they backed it up and they were tremendous performers. Some nicknames don't make it to the Super Bowl. The Redskins' posse named for a three-wide receiver formation was shot out of the Super Bowl saddle in the playoffs. In 1978, Atlanta's grit splits never made it to the Super Bowl, but made many appearances in an opposing team's backfield. Buffalo, 1970, The Electric Company. They call us The Electric Company. 
because we cut loose with the juice. They were the linemen that provided the spark for Buffalo's power source, O.J. Simpson. We just, just believed that, uh, that we just couldn't be stopped. The electric company never made it to the big game, but the electricity that turned on the juice can light up again today because this year their bills have made it all the way. Neither of these two teams have any sort of group nickname, and the reason, well, as Dan Deardorff told us a little while ago, situational substitutions, Brent. All right, Jack, thank you very much. Earlier today, Bill Parcells arrived, and now Marv Levy is counterpart with the Buffalo Bills, preparing for Super Bowl 25. It's called Drixorum a powerful 12-hour cold medicine that at one time you couldn't buy without a prescription. Coming into Super Bowl 25, the hot quarterback is Jim Kelly, and he's one of the few in the league still calling his own plays on the field. 13 of the 24 Super Bowl MVPs have been quarterbacks, but the road to Tampa was the story of two quarterbacks. And for the first time in three years, Joe Montana was not a survivor. You really didn't need a road map to see which team was going to Super Bowl 25 from the AFC. All you had to do was watch quarterback Jim Kelly, number 12, and Jay Schrader, number 13. In a game that demanded toughness, Jim Kelly delivered touchdowns, while Jay Schrader delivered five interceptions that took the Raiders out of the game early. Smith is at the left end. Here he comes. Schrader throws. He's hit. Intercepted at the 30-yard line. Racing down the left side is tally to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Buffalo! So Raider disaster goes on at Rich Stadium. Schrader's disastrous performance was further intensified by the stunning play of Jim Kelly. He shattered the Raiders' pride with poise that allowed him to throw for 300 yards and two touchdowns. And a fumble by Kelly on the snap. He picks it up, tries to bounce out of there. He's running right. He throws, completed the five. Lofton, touchdown, Buffalo. Holy Toledo. What a play Kelly made out of a near disaster. Kelly led the biggest first half scoring surge in NFL playoff history and crushed the Raiders in the AFC Championship game 51-3. Our goal is not to go to Tampa, it's to win in Tampa. Buffalo is now only one step from their objective. And the man who made it happen is Jim Kelly. In the NFC Championship, conventional wisdom was that Joe Montana would be the difference against the New York Giants. Rice and Chandler the outs. Montana's looking long, throws medium. Complete for a big break to Taylor to the 30, the 25, the 20, 15, he'll score. Early in the third quarter, San Francisco's big play offense broke a 6-6 tie as wide receiver John Taylor turned a simple sideline pass from Joe Montana into a 61-yard touchdown. Early in the final period, the Giants suffered an apparent fatal blow as quarterback Jeff Hostetler was dropped by Jim Burt and had to be helped off the field. The Giants responded by rushing, flushing, and then crushing Montana. Meanwhile, Hostetler limped back to the field and began driving the Giants toward Florida. And completes to Bavaro at the 40-yard line. He's still on his feet and drags three tacklers with him. Joe Montana himself could not have done it any better. Rolls to his right. Looks, throws, complete far sideline. Inside the 30-yard line. Fans are on their feet and screaming. Ball will be spotted at the 32. Snap, spot. Kick is away, he's got the distance. been a 
up in the air for hours. Now you gotta make up the time. Aren't you glad Hertz has a faster, easier way to rent a car? Number one, Club Gold. No paperwork, no stopping at counters, nothing to slow you down. Hertz, we're America's wheels. You go straight to our gold parking area, where your car is waiting, ready to go. I'm gonna make it. Hertz, we're it's the fastest way to rent a car. An FBI trainee. A brilliant psychotic. I'm here to learn from you. Mind against mind. What does he do, this man you see? Clue for clue. I'll have you catch him, Larry. You know who he is, don't you? She's playing a game she can't lose. Tell me his name, Doctor. To find a killer, she must stop. The Silence of the Lambs, rated R. Special sneak preview, February 2nd. Opens Thursday, February 14th. Well, I took a cold pill. It's Marty. Take contact with 600 tiny pills that last up to 12 hours. <laughs> ah, finito. Contact saved the day. Thunder! There's a whole day's work in every contact. Question. How can you help stop America's growing dependence on foreign oil? Carpool. It can save 7.5 million gallons of gasoline a day. Let's put our energy into saving it. Join an all-star lineup Wednesday, February 6th. First, John Ritter's back. Yeah! But three's a crowd. Hey, was it good for me? It's Jamie Lee Curtis, Richard Lewis, and John Ritter together in the all-new Anything But Love. Then, it's an all-new Barbara Walters special with Julia Roberts. Forever love. I believe in that. Go figure. John Goodman and the Judds. I just can't accept that not being with her on stage. It's the season premiere of Anything But Love, followed by an all-new Barbara Walters special Wednesday, February 6th. When the Giants won Super Bowl 21, quarterback Phil Simms torched Denver. 26 consecutive points the Giants scored that day, but Simms must sit this one out because of that arch injury. That's where react. Jeff Hostadler now has the opportunity to fulfill every backup quarterback's dream, win a Super Bowl. I don't know what it means, Brent, but Jeff has been very smiley and very upbeat as he's come in and out of the locker room over the last half hour. You know, when people talk about Jeff Hostetler, one of the talents that's often praised is his ability to scramble. So when I spoke to him earlier this week, I asked where that came from, how he learned it. And he said to me, in all seriousness, it probably came from the family chicken coop. He and his brothers constantly chasing each other around as they collected eggs. Now, when Jeff talks about the family farm in rural western Pennsylvania, his face flashes with happiness. So appropriately, that's where this story begins. Chores, not sports, were the number one priority in the Hostetler home. Their farm, Dolly's Delight, with lots of animals and lots of children, is named for Jeff's mom. The Hostetlers cultivated a very close, very religious family. Each of the seven boys and girls became excellent athletes. Jeff grew up playing football, basketball, and baseball, and was his class valedictorian as well. He's my little boy <laughs> who has uh, grown up, and, and uh, he has done things that he's dreamed about and that I've dreamed along with him, and they're coming true for him. In high school, Jeff led teams in three sports to state championships, but he was best known as number three, the star quarterback of the football team. He was a hard worker, also a linebacker on defense, and the punter. Like his three brothers, he was recruited by Joe Paterno and Penn State as a quarterback, but the coach apparently changed plans. I don't think uh, Joe ever came out and said that he wanted to make a linebacker out of me. Uh, my two older brothers had gone to Penn State as quarterbacks and, and ended up as linebackers. So Jeff took charge of his own football career and transferred to West Virginia University. He looks back on that decision as the pivotal point in his entire life. He finally played football the way he knew he could. He was a Rhodes Scholar candidate, and he met Vicki Nealon, whom he married right after graduation. There was just something interesting about her that uh, caught my eye. It just so happened that she was also the, the head coach's daughter. So I was really risking a lot here because uh, I took a lot of flack from uh, teammates, but uh, it was well worth it. In 1984, Jeff was drafted by the New York Giants. He never thought of himself as a backup quarterback, but in four seasons, Jeff never threw a pass. Instead, he did whatever he could. Late this season, though, with Phil Simms injured, Jeff was finally center stage again. 
And after beating the 49ers last weekend, he called his family, reaching his five and a half year old son, Jason. When I called him and I said, Jason, do you know where we're going? And uh, he did come out and said, yeah, Daddy, we're going to the Super Bowl. And uh, they're really excited to come down and, and not so much go to the Super Bowl, but uh, to watch Daddy play. Vicki and Jeff have three and a half year old Justin and a third child due in April. Jason, their oldest, was born with a heart valve defect. I had a real tough time this first 11 months uh, of life. It was a real struggle. It's, um, it's a tough thing to talk about a little bit. Um, I don't know why this just happened, but uh, I'm just really thankful that, uh, you know, that I have a five and a half year old. Really blessed. Jason is, in Jeff's eyes, a miracle on earth, and he gives his father perspective on this weekend. When I look back over my life and say, uh, you know, what was your greatest thrill, uh, even if we win the Super Bowl and, and I can say I'm going to Disney World, uh, that won't be uh, my biggest thrill in life. So Jeff Hostetler becomes a daddy for the third time in April. He said he and his wife, Vicki, do know the sex of the child. When I asked, of course, he wouldn't tell me. And Brent, another example of his family closeness this morning, Jack Root says he spied Jeff sneaking out of the hotel early to have breakfast on Super Bowl Sunday with his brothers. Thank you, Beth. And uh, Jeff wearing number 15 and one. Yep, he's going to be fighting a numbers game here today as Jim Kelly will be wearing the Super Bowl's luckiest number. In the early Super Bowls, 12 was clearly the lucky number. Joe Namath in Super Bowl three. In Super Bowl six and 12, Roger Staubach. Bob Greasy in Super Bowl seven and eight. Ken Stabler in Super Bowl 11. And Terry Bradshaw in Super Bowls nine, 10, 13, and 14, all wore number 12 when they led their teams to victory. It added up to 10 wins in 12 years for lucky number 12, but it appears the magic has run out. Since Bradshaw led the Steelers to victory in Super Bowl 14, a period of 10 years, no Super Bowl winning quarterback has worn the number. This company basketball game is a great idea. Yeah. It'll build togetherness, friendship, team spirit. So let's have some fun. Oh. You're all over me. Tell me, please, throw the ball, please. Stop. If you follow me again, you're going to be looking for the ball. There are a lot of ways to improve business morale. The best. The on-time delivery of Federal Express. Mr. Triola? What? Your package from Tokyo. Have a good one. Thank you. Federal Express. Absolutely, positively the best in the business. Extra strength Rolaids antacid. Stronger because it has more calcium carbonate. More than any Tums tablet. Extra strength Rolaids. 1,000 milligrams of calcium carbonate and salt-free. This settles it once and for all. Hey, Tom, why in the world would future Hall of Famer Nolan Ryan be shaving way out here in the Texas Hills? I don't know, Mel. I guess he never knows when he'll be called upon to make a pitch. The big metal shaver, because even good old boys want to look good. Now, when life turns up the heat... Sorry, Mr. O'Hare. There's degree antiperspirant. I just don't keep my patty waiting at the altar. Body heat activated degree is different. So, sir, patty says that we have a lot in common. Like what? Uh, is it hot in here? Every time your body heat rises, Degree turns on extra protection. When life turns up the heat, Degree has you covered. Fishing. I love fishing. Degree. Your body heat yeah, turns it on. Shark. What goes into some of the world's most innovative business products? Shark thinking. Why this high-resolution VGA notebook computer fits in your briefcase? Shark thinking. It created Sharp's most advanced high-speed copying system. Shark thinking. It made the world's first desktop full-color fax a reality. And the wizard electronic organizer a necessity. The one way to meet new business needs with new technology is... Shark thinking about business. News matters, and it matters where you get your news. ABC News is monitoring the war and the world 24 hours a day. Peter Jennings. The Iraqis say that civilian targets are being... Ted Koppel. Is Saddam holding back his weapons? Updates on the hour. Special reports as events warrant. Complete coverage on every broadcast. The people of ABC News ask questions and get answers. 
in touch more than ever. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. The weather is nice enough. We could have played this Super Bowl in Buffalo today. Len Swan, it's wonderful to have that city represented finally in a Super Bowl. It certainly is. Buffalo has been both supportive and patient. But you know there were times when the city and this team were picked on and laughed at. But when the Raiders fell, there was just one emotion that the city and their number one fan shared. It was pure jubilation that moment last week when Buffalo won the AFC title, especially for the only owner the Bills have ever known, Ralph Wilson. I was stunned. Uh, you know, you, you always think about that, uh, but you never count on it. You just hope for the best. And uh, it was a great feeling when uh, these fellows, they played hard all year. And, uh, you know, I'm really proud of them and happy for them. Ralph Wilson was born and raised in Detroit. His family owned a small share in the Lions. When Lamar Hunt put together the upstart American Football League in 1960, he asked Wilson to sign on as one of the original owners. In the early days, these adventurers called themselves the Foolish Club, and for their first draft, pulled players' names from a hat. Four years later, Wilson had assembled one of the best defenses in the AFL, winning back-to-back -back titles in 1964 and 65. The quarterback and the Ralph Wilson fan, Jack Kemp. You know, I, I think Ralph Wilson is one of the most beloved owners. Uh, he's the most friendly, one of the most friendly. There's a lot of great guys, but uh, I think everybody likes Ralph. You can't help but not like him. After the mid-60s, the years were lean for Buffalo. They won just one game in 1968, earning the right to choose first in the draft. They didn't waste it. They picked the juice. O.J. won the NFL rushing title and took them to the playoffs once. But even O.J. wasn't enough. With O.J., we had a we had a good team offensively. We didn't have any defense. I mean, O.J. would score, and then the other team would score. <laughs> and I think if O.J. had had the ball last in the game, we would have won. But the other team happened to have the ball last, and they won because we couldn't stop anybody. Over the last 10 years, the Bills have rebuilt. To help in that effort, Wilson hired his daughter, Linda, as a scout, the only woman scout in the NFL. In fact, Ralph is special in many ways among owners. He knows every player and often takes time to Looking chat with the fans. Another great season this year. Well, it was exciting last year, wasn't it? Though he lives in Detroit and avoids publicity, Ralph Wilson is not an absentee owner. I am not just an owner that goes to the games and then gets in a uh, stretch limousine and goes to the airport. I like to watch practice. I like to talk to the players, the coaches. I am more involved than I think some owners, because that's what I enjoy. It has been 26 years since the old AFL championship. 26 years to dream about one moment. The biggest thrill I'm going to get is to see them come on the field and have all those Buffalo fans and the people throughout the country see the Bills come on the field at the Super Bowl is going to mean everything to me. I asked Ralph what was his number one reason for his team being in the Super Bowl today. He said it wasn't money, it wasn't talent, it wasn't coaching. He said it was attitude. And if you talk about a new attitude, you have to talk about Bruce Smith because he will quickly tell you that he and Buffalo Brent are number one. You know, Len, Bruce is being touted as the defensive player of the 90s, and that accolade comes from the star of the 80s, Lawrence Taylor. Interesting that both of those stars have battled the evils of drugs to put their lives back together. In the drug world, Beth Ruiak, as you know, claims far too many victims, and I know that you have a very warm look at an innocent one. Well, Brent, the drug war was the war that we were fighting before Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. And one of the heroes of that war is 12-year-old David Opon of New York, who was just getting to know the United States, its language, and its culture. One of David's wishes was to come to the Super Bowl. So through the American Sportscasters Association and ABC Sports, he is here today. We'll talk to David in just a moment. But first, the story of this boy who was set on fire because he said no to drugs. The Brooklyn streets of New York City, sometimes a frightening place. The place where David Opon had to prove what he believed in. The day before his 12th birthday, David headed for school, but along the way, another boy forced David into an abandoned building, tied him to a pipe, drenched him with something flammable, then set him on fire. All because David says he refused to smoke crack. 
When the socks around his wrists burned through, David ran into the Brooklyn streets for help. Half of David's body was burned. Doctors only gave him half a chance to survive. Jesse Jackson and others came to visit. So did former President Ronald Reagan with the former First Lady. He's in our thoughts and prayers, and he's a very brave young man at all. One day after the attack was David's 12th birthday. Hundreds of gifts and cards from strangers arrived. David's father, Luther, had brought his family to America from Haiti just 18 months earlier. Other children with David's defiance spoke out. I cannot believe that somebody would do burn that boy for not taking drugs. If I was in his situation, I would probably say no, too. And even if it might take my life, then I would say no. In the following weeks, David's family moved to another neighborhood. And five months later, David came home from the hospital. His healing skin would be a startling reminder. His words, though, would teach. I think all the parents got to have some time to talk with their children about um, what happened, about um, drugs and how the world is today. David Oakmont, ladies and gentlemen, hero of the year. David, would you please come up and join us? It is not over yet, this odyssey of an immigrant boy who's become a hero in his new country. His body and soul continue to be toughened by scars, and yet David speaks to children with gentle honesty. They don't have to be scared like if uh, someone asks them to take drugs. They don't have to be scared like take it. They don't, they, they have to be ready and have guts to say no. It's not, it's hard to say no, but someone got to do it. The Brooklyn streets are frightening. But David Opont wasn't afraid then. He isn't afraid now. And David Opont is joining us now. David, what part of this weekend is the most exciting to you? Um, the part of, um, the part of, um, the, mo the most exciting thing is I'm here in the Super Bowl and I like to, um, thanks ABC and Lewis Shorts, president of the American Sportcaster Association, for making it possible for me to be here today. I don't think I need to ask you who you're cheering for today, but go ahead, you can tell me anyway. Uh, both team are real great, so I'm going for both. I don't know. Oh! <laughs> Yesterday it was the Giants, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it but. was. David, I know that you're still going into schools, bringing your anti-drug message. So what is that message, if we could hear it, to the children of America? Uh, these young, young people um, stay, of, stay away from drugs because, because drugs is a hard thing to do, and drugs is a, um, my, and mines is a um, hard thing to waste. So. David, have a wonderful weekend. And I, I will, um, just one moment, I, like to, I, I would like to say to all the truth in the, in the, in the East to, to be strong and come home safe. We're with you. Thanks a lot, David O'Brien. God bless America. Thank you, David. We should tell you that the young child who attacked David is serving three years right now in a juvenile detention facility. He is 14 years old. David is a seventh grader this year. He is going to have quite a weekend to talk about when he goes back to school on Tuesday. Brent. Beth, thank you very much. Matt Barr, he has been the hero, especially in the championship game for the Giants. And coming up, we're going to take a look at Instant Replay.
Whatever the mood, whatever the weather, there's an Audi that lets you take control. Today's Super Bowl game will be played according to NFL rules. The 30 minutes after the Super Bowl game will be played according to Davis rules. And we're Davis. Davis rules special preview right after Super Bowl coverage. Wednesday, a daughter has her day in court. What are you going to do, Dad? Have me arrested like you did, Mom? A daughter has her way in court. This is your father's chambers. Your Honor, I can explain. Equal justice, Wednesday. It's in here. The 9X Yellow Pages. Why would anyone need another? Now over here, we're gonna put that computer. You don't want it over there? I don't know. I think we when the it. moment comes to build your dreams, no card's better than gold MasterCard. This corner's for your weight machine. With more buying power, yeah. at nearly three times more places than American Express. This wall's for your trophies. No pressure, though. Yeah. Gold MasterCard, piece by piece, the best gold card to master the moment. Now this is a baseball. Wrap up Super Bowl 25 with Corey McFerrin tonight at 11.30. At this point, we're about an hour and 15 minutes from kicking off in Super Bowl 25. And at the top of the hour, we want to touch base with ABC News and Peter Jennings in New York. Peter? Okay, Brent, thanks very much. Just in case people have uh, just tuned in, the military's had another go today at stopping the enormous flow of oil which has been spilling into the Persian Gulf. Last night, U.S. fighter bombers uh, went at the oil pumping equipment in order to cut off the oil which had been pouring out of sto storage tanks into the Gulf using precision-guided bombs. This is the Defense Department video which they showed us. It may be another day before the military knows if the bombing was successful, but the commander... This play helped give birth to instant replay. The 1979 AFC Championship game. The Oilers' Mike Renfro catches an apparent touchdown. The officiating crew, with discussion as their only recourse, calls the pass incomplete. And the Steelers advance to the Super Bowl. In this year's playoffs, an apparent fumble by Washington is scooped up by Philadelphia's Ben Smith, who runs for an apparent touchdown. The official is screened on the play. He does not blow the inadvertent whistle. He lets the play run its course. Now we will show you what typically unfolds around instant replay. The television crew inside the truck immediately searches for the best angle for the instant replay. The replay people upstairs will see what you see at home. And over the next two minutes, they will attempt to reach a decision as to whether to uphold or reverse the decision made by the official on the field. Sometimes the delays are longer than two minutes. The pressure is intense. Finally, the evidence is conclusive. The replay official reversed the call. He moved the runners down by contact. It's the feeling of, uh, I'm sure, the large number of our officials that you'd much rather have a mistake corrected than perhaps a few days later be vilified for a mistake that was made if it was a bad mistake. Still, there are inequities. A playoff game provides twice as many cameras as a regular season game, thus cutting down the available angles and increasing the probability of the unseen. For today's Super Bowl game, the coverage will be extensive. The field will be blanketed by cameras covering all angles, but even this equipment cannot guarantee a perfect system. Super Bowl 21. This Denver pass was ruled incomplete, and network coverage did not provide a conclusive angle to reverse the call until too late. Then with all its problems, why did the teams vote to keep it? The fans expect it. It's part of their viewing uh, process, and I would hate to think of uh, us playing a season without it and having a Dan Deardorff sitting up in the booth and pointing out the error that we can't correct anymore. And if we can continue to try to iron out some of the flaws that, that, that annoy people, I think that it should stay. 
We believe it takes too much away from the game, from the fans in the stands, the long delays, et cetera. And, and what we've seen, unfortunately, is a tremendous uh, consistent inconsistency of plays to be re reviewed and those that are not. A victim of the rule, Philadelphia owner Norman Brayman explains his negative position. The worst thing in the world is to lose a football game because of a bad call by an official. And it was very obvious to me, for example, during our game with the Washington Redskins, when I saw the review of the play, that the official was wrong on the field. But to have the darn thing take five minutes. And when one looks at all of the, of the negatives attached to instant replay, uh, I, I say let's, let's just get better officiating on the field. Let's figure out a, a better way to improve the quality of our officiating in general. And I'm confident that that would be a satisfactory answer. Now, what's interesting here politically is that it was Norman Brayman who had passed, switched his vote, saved instant replay for this season. Uh, Dickey would vote against it. Do you agree with that? What's your no, feeling? No, I would vote for it. In fact, I am more for instant replay today than I was three years ago. In doing college broadcasts over the last three years, I don't know how many times I've left the stadium thinking the game might have been different if they'd had the advantage of instant replay. Five. I'm for it. I think, I think we do need to improve the uh, quality and the performance of those in the replay booth, the official, and also the communicator. Sometimes a retiring official on the field is, does not make the best uh, replay official. You know, the other thing, uh, sometimes the game announcers mislead the viewers at home. I think the game announcers need to be more up on the rules and also understand the complexities of the entire instant replay system. Yeah, well, Bob and Dick, certainly the fans want it. All the public opinion polls indicate that, and it will be used today here in Super Bowl 25. We'll continue with our coverage in just a moment. Okay, I've analyzed every horse in the race. All right, let's Track conditions, yeah. handicap, weight, post position, who rode what horse when. Okay, so who are you betting on? Number eight. Number eight. We got the best stats there or what? Well, eight's always been my lucky number. Oh, yeah, you can't lose that. Right. Relax. You're among friends. Levi's 100% cotton dockers. I used to have dandruff, so I tried head and shoulders. Then I tried Seltzen Blue. Blue is better. Seltzen Blue relieves dandruff flecking better than head and shoulders. And doctors recommend it more than head and shoulders, Danorex, and Tegrin. Blue is better. Seltzen Blue. To help reliever heartburn, regular Rolaids uses an aluminum salt. But his antacid is Tums, and Tums has oh, calcium. Oh. Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Tums. You've heard all about cold relief. Now you're going to hear about hot relief. New Tylenol cold and flu with more medicine than any other hot liquid flu formula. Heat releases the power of this lemony medicine with three cold and flu fighters for your coughing, sneezing, and congestion. Plus Tylenol pain reliever for your fever, sore throat, aches, and pains. New Tylenol cold and flu, part of Tylenol's complete cold relief line. Nobody cares for your cold like Tylenol cold. Dynatrim, the weight loss plan from the makers of Centrum. Just blend for a delicious shake. Blend water for a creamy mousse. Or freeze it for a frozen treat. Come on, lose yourself in the taste. More delicious ways to lose it. Shake it, freeze it, creamy mousse it. You've never been so thin. Located eight miles from Tampa Stadium is MacDill Air Force Base, and that's the headquarters for General Norman Schwarzkopf, the commander of our armed forces in the Persian Gulf. Primary function is the training there of the Air Force's F-16 pilots. Now, because of the crisis in the Persian Gulf, you can expect the players' celebrations to be somewhat muted today. In fact, the entire issue here has been the subject of controversy, and Beth Ruiak has more. Beth? Brent, I think whether you agree or disagree with showboating, as you said, it's going to be a lesser element today, although the signs in this pregame time are that people are still intent upon having a pretty good time. We do want to show you that there are some folks, particularly in the football world, that have made a real name for themselves. Here you see Icky Woods doing his famous Icky Shuffle. 
and you're about to see Clarence Verdan of the Indianapolis Colts and his Verdans. And who can forget Neon Deion Sanders high stepping as he does. Okay, the players have offensive coaches, defensive coaches, nutritionists, weight trainers, even psychologists, but until now, I don't think they've ever had a dance coach. Break it down. MC Hammer, the best dance coach the NFL could have. Have you had fun teaching your new students? Oh, yeah, I had a lot of fun. Uh, Icky and Clarence and uh, Prime Time myself. We've been running around here okay. and uh, just having a real good time. Let's see it. Go ahead. Okay, MC, thank you very much. Tomorrow night, you're up for seven American Music Awards, the event shown live on ABC. It'll be a bit muted like the Super Bowl is because of the events overseas. Well, you know, um, it's kind of like a, a situation where my mind is in two places at one time because, of course, I'm thinking about the situation, uh, you know, in the Middle East. And at the same time, we'll be having the, uh, the American Music Awards. So uh, I'm going to dedicate my performance uh, to the troops. But you are a sportsman at heart. You got your start via a sports, a pro sports team. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, through the Oakland A's, I used to be the bat boy, and I used to also be an assistant for Charles O'Finley uh, when I was very young, 10, 11 years old. So I had a lot of fun with, uh, with baseball. And uh, Mike Davis and Dwayne Murphy, formerly of the Oakland A's, they helped me get my start. Thank you for being our special guest today. Thank you. Back to you, Brent. All right, Beth, thank you very much. And it's almost hammer time for Marv Levy and Bill Parcell. We'll hear from the two coaches coming up. This week, Pepsi-Cola announced it was canceling the world's largest telephone call-in contest planned for Diet Pepsi on today's game. Pepsi made this decision following discussions with federal... For Bill Parcells, his second Super Bowl as a head coach. For Marv Levy, his first, but he was an assistant coach on George Allen's Washington Redskins staff. And here's how the two men compare their Giants and their Bills. I think I'd start with special teams. I think we have a fairly good return game. I think we have some pretty good uh, coverage guys on our teams. Uh, we have an excellent punter. We have strong kick coverage teams, and we stress it very much. Uh, we have a variety of receivers that Jim Kelly can go to. I think our offensive line has been uh, a strength. And I think we have improved as the year has gone on defensively. I'd like to have a little more explosiveness offensively. We don't have a lot of depth at the receiver position. I wish we were a little stronger along the defensive front in terms of size and heft. I would like to have uh, a little more pressure on the quarterback than we've been able to muster throughout the course of the year. They're skilled people offensively. Um, they spread you well. Uh, they can throw it to almost anyone, and they have an excellent runner. Their defense combined with their strong running game has given them a tremendous possession time advantage, we think, over the year, particularly in the playoffs since they've come into it. that they've had some difficulty with people in the running game from time to time. I wish I could say we found some, and, and we don't. We don't think, listen, there's the fellow we have to go after, or we're going to run left or right or something like that. We don't see him. That's why the Giants lead the National uh, League in, in, in defense right now. You try to in, use his athletic skill, which is... Uh, uh, the ability to run, move, and integrate that into your offense, which we've had a month to attempt to do now. His ability to move, his mobility buys him time. He's got a lot better arm than many people might have suspected before he had his opportunity to play as much as he's playing right now. I think it has also loosened the Giants' uh, approach to offense a bit. I think they're doing a lot more play-action passing. They're doing a lot more of it on first down. Big, strong, strong arm, experienced, can get the ball just anywhere he wants to. 
and uh, seems to be playing uh, a little more within himself than in the past. He has the flair that you'd like in a quarterback. He's tough-minded. He's become, and it's really matured for him this year, come to the fore for him this year, uh, a good student of the game. He enjoys the game planning process now when he used to think he could do it with just his arm and his arm alone. MC Hammer, rap star and Pepsi drinker. Well, today, we secretly replaced his Pepsi with Coke. Let's see what happens. Only one franchise accomplished this, and it was the Raiders out of Oakland and later Los Angeles. But what's interesting is the last time it occurred was right here on this field. So the Giants will be attempting to duplicate what the Raiders did against Washington because they were beaten by Buffalo in a regular season game, 17-13. And uh, Al Michaels, uh, I wonder if that'll give the Giants a little more incentive today. You know, I think it's worth reviewing that game, Brent, but uh, before we do, consider the scenario going in. It took place on Saturday, December 15th. It was a nationally televised and much anticipated game, but it was a much more important game for the Bills. Both the Bills and the Giants were 11 and 2, but the Giants had already clinched not only a playoff berth, but the NFC East. Meanwhile, the Bills were in a real dogfight with Miami with the Dolphins to come the following week. The Bills really had to win that game, and they did 17 to 13. And Frank, not only did the Giants lose the game on the scoreboard, but they lost a, a very vital element as well. Indeed, their quarterback, neither team, of course, knowing that they would be losing a court, both their quarterbacks in that particular game. And as you pointed out, the Giants had already clinched, and they actually moved the ball very well in the opening part of that game. Phil Sims was having a, a great year before he was injured in this game. And here is Phil leading the league in passing, as a matter of fact. Phil on the rollout and finding. Stephen Baker on the sidelines and then down he went with a strange injury a broken bone in the arch of his foot gone for the season and in came Jeff Hostetler who hadn't played much at all since the Phoenix game earlier in the year and he obviously was tentative this one he rifled into the ground and he had a bit of a problem in moving the football and nevertheless the defense for the Giants when Kelly went down they really attacked Frank Wright Kelly's replacement very physical as you can see Collins with the big hit on the sideline. Taylor with the sack and then it would be Marshall who did the same kind of a thing. So the Giants played consistently defensively and as we well know Hostetler began to grow in the job mm -hmm. and he's grown in the job and uh, he might be the best quarterback for this particular game. Well Dan talking about the similar scenarios the Bills also lost their quarterback but a whole other story Sims watches this one as street clothes but uh, Kelly is back and, and then I, some and I don't think that's what people thought when we first saw it it looked like it was going to be Jim Kelly that was going to be out for a long time but it was good news for the Buffalo Bills and when you look back to that game yeah they needed the game because of home field and all that but this was a chance for Buffalo to play one of the NFC bad boys one of the NFC bullies and of course Jim Kelly knew it and he had his club going like he always has him going early and strong this might be their strongest play the crossing pattern to Andre Reed one of the giant mistake last time was the fact that they missed a lot of tackles and it just doesn't have to be deep they can work that pattern short You'll see it could go long, but here just as effectively, it's good for about five yards. Even in short yardage, even on the goal line, it's still the shotgun formation, and the series pays off. Andre Reid gets the early touchdown. The Giants gave up two touchdowns on Buffalo's first two possessions, and the game settled because of the loss of Jim Kelly. When you need help, though, why not turn to the MVP defensively in the National Football League, Bruce Smith? Look at the way he knifes down the line of scrimmage. You can't cut him off, and not since Lawrence Taylor has the NFL seen a player so ably chase down a play from the backside. Bruce Smith, a dominating man on the line of scrimmage. And all that took place six weeks ago in NFL terms. That's ancient history. Super Bowl 25 from Tampa. The pregame show continues. John Goodman is King Ralph. You know, and sometimes when you hurry up occasionally, just occasionally, there's a mistake. Like I said, an occasional mistake. I guess you never know in this business when someone's going to need a job. But of course, we do know whose signature will be on the footballs here this afternoon. Commissioner Paul Tagliabue, thanks for joining us. And uh, the first question I think that really has been on everybody's mind is, is talk to us about the pressures that you felt and uh, the situation about perhaps canceling this Super Bowl game. 
Well, I think the pressures that I felt are the same that uh, we all feel as Americans. We know what our priorities are. Our priorities are peace and freedom, and we know what the armed forces are doing for us all in the Mideast. So we've kept that in perspective, and I think in that way we know what's going on this week. Commissioner, you'll be glad to know that all the troops over in the desert are watching us right now, and of course all of us want to send along nothing but the best, and great support is being shown. Both teams will have the helmets on, on the back. But when, when you put away the NFL ball with Paul Tagliabue's signature on it today, football is not going to go away until next fall. In fact, there's a brand new league debuting, a couple of continents involved. There you can see Frankfurt, London, Barcelona, Montreal and Canada, and of course they'll be joining teams in the United States. And a World League will premiere here March 24th with the New York Knights taking on Barcelona. And I, my, as Dick Vermeil joins us now, Commissioner, I want to ask, what is the relationship between the NFL and the New World League? Well, 26 of our teams own the World League, and so it's uh, backed by the National Football League owners and backed by the tradition, history, and the skill of the National Football League, and we're very, very excited about the World League of American Football. Now, will some of the experiments be tried there before perhaps you incorporate them in the NFL? Is that uh, the idea? Well, I don't think it's uh, that formal, frankly. I think they'll be experimenting with exciting things, and we'll be experimenting with exciting things, like we did this year and shortening our games a bit, and we'll all work together for the betterment of pro football internationally. One of the experiments you're holding, Dick, can you explain to us what that helmet is? Well, this helmet may look like any other football helmet, but it's different. It is equipped with a receiver so the coach can talk to the quarterback. Now, they say by midseason they're going to have a microphone in it so the quarterback can talk back. Now, I don't know how good an idea that is, but there are other fringe benefits, such as the coach being able to alert the quarterback he's about to be blindsided. We get rid of in the grass ball. <laughs> well, I don't know about in the grass, but Jim Kelly may get rid of the need for that helmet the way he's been playing with the no huddle <laughs> offense. Very good. Commissioner, thank you very much for joining us, and good luck. Thank you. Sun beginning to set here on Tampa Stadium, and we get ready for Super Bowl 25. ABC Sports coverage of Super Bowl 25. Brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you friends know when to say when. By Levi's Dockers. Relax, you're among friends. By the great taste of Diet Pepsi. You got the right one, baby. Uh-huh. And by Universal Pictures' new comedy, King Ralph, starring John Goodman and Peter O'Toole. Preparing in Saudi Arabia to watch a football game, Let's take you now, Judd Rose, ABC News. Fans of Saudi Arabia, young men play a young man's game. They are strangers in a strange land, caught in a world at war, trying for a moment to lose themselves in the joy of something familiar. Last night we had a, another scud attack here. We uh, had scud alerts three times in uh, less than eight hours. And uh, you know, when you let down from that, you need something to take your mind off what's, what the reality is around here. Which is why there may have been talk back home about canceling the Super Bowl, but very little over here. We get a, a keep in light where we are and what we're doing here. Uh, but the Super Bowl will be a little piece of home that uh, we can grab onto. A precious chance in a place where home can seem awfully far away. This is the Saudi equivalent of the wave. These fans are cheering a game of soccer, the national sport of choice. But for Americans on duty here, this is what often passes for a big game. So at this airbase in eastern Saudi Arabia, the Super Bowl is expected to draw hundreds to the TV tents, even though with the time difference, Kickoff is just past 2 o'clock in the morning. I'll probably be up anyway because of the scud alerts. I think uh, Saddam will have a couple planned for that evening. That's not just idle talk. This area has been under almost nightly attack from Iraq's scud missiles. So they'll be watching the Super Bowl with a cold drink in one hand and a gas mask in the other. And if uh, we get attacked by scuds, uh, which is a fair possibility, uh, if you'll put on your stuff and hit the floor, and if you can still see from where you're lying, we'll keep watching the game. It's hardly a joking matter, but they're all trying to make the best of a bad situation. 
There's even a Super Bowl betting pool, or so rumor has it. We couldn't tell you that officially, like it. unofficially. I couldn't even tell you that I won $40 on the NFC Championship, but I, I couldn't tell you that either. <laughs> Armed Forces Radio will also carry the Super Bowl live, so even troops in the field can follow the game, which is not to say that everyone wants to. Not me. Couldn't care less. Really? All I'm concerned about is getting home someday. That, of course, is the proper perspective. It's hard to take the Bills and the Giants too seriously when your life may depend on the Patriots and the Jets. So tonight, they'll lose themselves in the world of sports, and tomorrow they'll find themselves back in a world where nobody wins. I think there's one point that bears repeating. I know there's been a lot of talk this week about canceling the Super Bowl, but every single soldier that I've spoken with here says that the game should be played. I talked to one Air Force doctor yesterday and he said, life goes on, play the game. And if everybody there at the stadium thinks about us when they're singing the national anthem, well, that would be nice too. Brent? Thank you, Jared. And that should be some emotional moment when they finally sing the national anthem here. Tell the troops that a short time ago as the fans began filling in, you could hear that familiar chant, USA, USA. And for a very special perspective, let's go to Jack Whitaker. Jack? Well, thank you, Brent. 25 years ago, there was another war in another far-off exotic land. And it was a war going sour at the time as the smell of burning draft cards filled the land. But in Los Angeles at that first Super Bowl, nobody was talking about Vietnam or the troops that were there. All the talk was about how bad the Packers would beat the upstart Kansas City Chief in the American League and if CBS or NBC would win the rating because both networks were carrying the game. Well, we live in a different world now, don't we? Some things are better. Medicine for one, we have Billy Crystal to make us laugh, and people everywhere this week, no matter what their politics, even people in the narrow, spoiled world of professional sports are genuinely and deeply concerned about our people in Arabia. It has been a split-screen week here in Tampa, one eye on the war news, the other on game preparation. And the result of that has been to do away almost completely with the sea hype that usually drowns Super Bowls. Ironically, though concentration was hard, there was more focus on the game itself than in any Super Bowl I've ever been to. These two teams, I think, against this background are going to give us a memorable football game. They have traveled further than any other teams to get to this Super Bowl, and they and us with them have made a long psychological journey because when they went to training camp in July, Iraq and the United States were allies. Dwayne Thomas, a Dallas Cowboy, was asked at a Super Bowl in New Orleans how it felt to play in this ultimate game. He said, if this is the ultimate game, why do they play it every year? And so now, finally, after 25 years, from Los Angeles and Vietnam to Tampa and the Desert Storm, we all know what Dwayne Thomas knew. The Super Bowl is an important football game, but that's all a game. They let you out of your cage for three whole days. You're going to get as far away as you can. So you call a rent-a-car company that gives you a great weekend rate and free unlimited mileage. Hurts were America's wheels. We give you a lot of weekend for your money. That's why America made us number one. Hurts were America's wheels. Hi. Question. How can you help stop America's growing dependence on foreign oil? Slow down. It can save over 4 million gallons of gasoline a day. Let's put our energy into saving it. The Adenarex side really feels like it's doing a lot more than the head and shoulders side. It feels real cool and tingly over here. Both have a dandruff ingredient, but Denorex adds an extra anti-itch medicine you can feel working. The tingle told me that Denorex was doing more for my hair.
spend less time at the pump. The CRX HF from Honda. Tonight after the Super Bowl. Do you want to see something really funny? I smelt the aroma of fairly young women. <laughs> and some brand new cookies. Think Grandpa's really got a metal plate in his head? Uh-huh. I put a magnet to his head once and a said that. It's Jonathan Winters and Randy Quaid in the preview of Davis Rules tonight after the Super Bowl. What time you want me to pick you up? I'm almost ready now. <laughs> ABC Sports coverage of Super Bowl 25. Brought to you by Hertz. Whether you rent a car for business or pleasure, Hertz is America's wheel. Welcome back to Tampa Stadium as it begins to fill now for Super Bowl 25 with the Buffalo Bills, a solid touchdown favorite over the New York Giants, despite the fact that the NFC has won each of the last six Super Bowls. Now in the middle of the field is that turf which was torn up late last night. Lynn Swan and Jack Arruda have been watching and talking with the players. And Lynn, will there be any footing problem down there in the middle of the field today? According to everyone I talked to, there won't be. Daryl Talley checked it out and thought the field was a little soft in the middle, but not a problem. And keep in mind, Marv Levy was a coach in Kansas City where George Thomas from. And he has the utmost confidence in him. One other note, the only person I saw that was nervous today was Rick Tootin, the punter. Keep in mind, during the playoffs, he only punted three times for an average of 40 yards. So his nervousness, nervousness might come through in his kicks, Brent. All right, Jack, yesterday at practice, the Giants, though, were not pleased with the turf. Uh, what did they experience during the pregame warm-up? Well, the first thing, Brent, they experienced a surprise when they got here. Most of them didn't even realize that the turf had been replaced. I checked with some of them, specifically Bart Oates, and he said, I'm a little bit concerned about it. I checked with Jeff Hofstadler. He said, I'm very concerned about it. But I'll tell you, Jack, I don't intend to spend a lot of time out there. I asked Bre uh, Matt Barr about it, and he said, we certainly won't try a field goal from that distance. All right, Jack, thank you. And, uh, of course, we all recall the great Super Bowl X that Len Swan catch. He was such a ballet performer in that game. But let me tell you, he was not the answer to the trivia question receiver who came out of that game. Dallas Cowboys wide receiver Percy Howard, number 81, caught only one pass in his entire career. But he had the good sense to catch it in Super Bowl X, which made him an instant trivia quiz answer. It's a sports trivia type question, you might say. And uh, they ask it very frequently. I'm sure that everyone in this area by now, uh, they know uh, what the answer is, but people keep coming up with the question. And, and I'm driving down the street and I'll hear it on the radio, and I said, I can answer that, you know. What people don't realize, however, is that when Roger Staubach brought the Cowboys to within four points late in the game, Howard very nearly went from being a trivia quiz answer to a bona fide Super Bowl hero. Prior to the Middle East crisis, Coca-Cola scheduled a Super Bowl promotion, which will be aired later. However, we also want to recognize what is truly important, our men and women serving in the Persian Gulf. How do I know where to get my brakes done right? Come to Midas. You get a lot of value for the price, plus peace of mind, knowing the job will be done right. That's why more people come to us for brakes, knowing that nobody beats Midas. Nobody. It seems that every time you turn around these days, another pain reliever with ibuprofen in it is comparing itself to Tylenol. But you know what they can't say? They can't say they're gentler than Tylenol, because they're not. Tylenol won't irritate your stomach the way ibuprofen sometimes can. That's a medical fact. And is it any wonder that today, hostels use Tylenol 14 times more than ibuprofen? Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. Thank you. 
1989, the Honda Accord was the best-selling car in America. Let us repeat that. In 1990, the Honda Accord was the best-selling car in America. Thank you. on all our minds. Prime time, investigations, asking questions to get the story from behind the front lines of the Gulf War. 2020, stories that touch your life from the people who care. When news really matters, it matters where you get your news. ABC News. The Harlem Globetrotters bring their basketball magic to Walt Disney World. Plus, skating's top pairs light up the ice. It's all Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Uh, Bob Gracie and Dick Vermeil closing in on Super Bowl 25. Dick, prediction time. I think I'd go with the Giants by three, say 14-17. Well, I'm an OFC, AFC guy. My heart is with Buffalo, but my head tells me the Giants. Uh, I think it's going to be like 17-13. Sounds like we have a chance for finally a close That's Super Bowl. Cool. It will be. All right, so it's going to be the New York Giants against the Buffalo Bills, and of course, on this day here in Tampa Stadium, they are honoring the Silver Anniversary team right here before the game. And now to introduce all the honorees, let's go to our colleague, Hall of Famer, Frank Gifford. Many of the NFL's top players have competed in the Super Bowl since the game began in 1967. This fall, with fans like you doing the voting, the best of the best were selected for the Silver Anniversary all-time Super Bowl team based on their performances in the first 24 games. It's my honor now to introduce the Silver Anniversary All-Time Team. At the defensive tackle, a man who played a key role in all four Super Bowl victories of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Joe Green. From the Dallas Cowboys, the co-MVP of Super Bowl XII, who helped the Cowboys defeat the Broncos 27-10, Randy White. At defensive end, another member of the Steel Curtain and a four-time Super Bowl starter, L.C. Greenwood. And a starter at left end for the Dallas Cowboys in three Super Bowls, Ed Too Tall Jones. At the safeties, the hard-hitting strong safety from the Pittsburgh Steelers, Donnie Shell. And a man whose interception return in the first Super Bowl helped the Packers beat the Chiefs 35-10, Willie Wood. The inside linebacker, the emotional leader of the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, a force in the middle. He led them to victory in Super Bowl 9, 10, 13, and 14. Jack Lambert. Famous for his on-the-field stare, the intense leader of the Bears' defense is one of only two active defensive players chosen to the anniversary team. He led Chicago to victory in Super Bowl XX, Mike Singletary. The outside linebacker, another representative from the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. He combined with his teammates to hold the Vikings to 17 yards rushing in Super Bowl IX. A veteran of three Super Bowls, Jack Ham. The Mad Stork was a key member of four Super Bowl championship teams, playing with the Baltimore Colts and the Raiders. His massive six foot seven inch frame also allowed him to be a potent force on special teams. Ted Hendricks. The cornerbacks. A mainstay at right cornerback in all four Pittsburgh Super Bowls. A member of the Steelers from 1970 to 83, he is the sixth member of the Steeler defense to be selected to the anniversary team, Mel Blunt. A veteran of four previous Super Bowls, this defensive back from USC has played both safety and cornerback for the 49ers. 
a permanent fixture in the San Francisco secondary for a full decade, Ronnie Lott. The punter, a first round selection by the Raiders in 1973. He punted in all three of their Super Bowl victories. Ray Gah, the head coach. He led the Green Bay Packers to victory in the first two Super Bowl victories. A legend in the NFL, Vince Lombardi, represented today by his son, Vince Jr. The kicker. This Kansas City Chief was deadly from long range, as the Vikings discovered in Super Bowl IV when he kicked three field goals, Jan Stinnerud. The kick return specialist is a man whose long returns in two Super Bowls have provided the San Francisco 49ers with excellent field position, John Taylor. The offensive tackle. Now the head coach of the Los Angeles Raiders, he did not allow his Viking opponent one tackle in Super Bowl XI. Big Art Shell. Vince Lombardi described him as the finest player I've ever coached. Former Green Bay Packer great Forrest Gray. At guard, along with Art Shell, he anchored the left side of the Raiders' offensive line. He wears three Super Bowl rings. Gene Upshaw, the right guard for the Packers in Super Bowls one and two. He dominated the AFL's best, Jerry Kramer. At center, arguably the greatest to ever play the position, he was in the middle of a Steeler line that compiled 750 yards in two Super Bowls, Mike Webster. The quarterback is probably best remembered for driving the 49ers 92 yards for the winning touchdown in the closing seconds of Super Bowl 23. But he has also led San Francisco to four titles and has won the MVP award three times, Joe Montana. The wide receiver. The MVP of Super Bowl 23 came back the next year to catch a Super Bowl record three touchdowns after two games. He has catapulted himself to second on the all-time receiving list, Jerry Rice, the acrobatic one, who was instrumental in three Steeler wins. He was voted MVP in Super Bowl X after making four spectacular catches for 161 yards. Lynn Swan, the tight end, was a devastating blocker. And as a receiver, he caught four passes for 70 yards and one touchdown to help the Raiders defeat the Vikings in Super Bowl XI. Dave Casper. At running back, the eighth Steeler to be elected to the team in the all-time leading rusher in Super Bowl history. He was the MVP of Super Bowl IX. He has rushed for four Super Bowl touchdowns, Franco Harris. The only Miami Dolphin to be voted to the Silver Anniversary team, the MVP of Super Bowl VIII. He averaged over five yards a carry in two Super Bowls. And in Super Bowl VII, he helped the Dolphins cap off a perfect season, Larry Zonka. Ladies and gentlemen, the Silver Anniversary All-Time Super Bowl team. And now we await the crowning of some new Super Bowl heroes here this afternoon in Tampa. That wraps up our pregame show. Reminder, coming up at halftime, Peter Jennings and ABC News with a full report. Sit back and enjoy the Super Bowl on ABC. ABC sports coverage of Super Bowl 25. Brought to you by Pizza Hut Delivery. All over America, the switch is on to Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut, making it great. And by Honda, maker of fine quality automobiles. Test drive a Honda at your local dealer today. A promotional fee has been paid to ABC by United Airlines. Come fly the friendly skies. Tuesday, take time to laugh. You'll be glad you did. First, Tony and Angela trade places on Who's the Boss? Now I'm going to do things my way. Then, Jonathan Winters and Randy Quaid are father and son. <laughs> and father knows best. You know, Dwight, you ought to marry her. <laughs> and if you don't, just take her on a honeymoon. It's the premiere of Davis Rules right after Who's the Boss? Tuesday.